Welcome back to Upside Down Data. Let's talk about a realistic price prediction for HBAR over the next couple of years. So HBAR is the native token for the Hedera Hashgraph network, which is famous for its high throughput, low cost of transactions. And if we are entering into a new crypto bull market, I think the question a lot of people are asking if you look at HBAR is how high could it go? Could it hit the $1 mark that a lot of people have talked about. Could it go higher? Could it hit the $2 mark or even beyond? What is realistic? So what I wanna talk about in this video is a machine learning and simulation based approach that I took to arrive at a realistic price prediction for HBAR. So the basis of this approach is to first create a machine learning based model to predict the expected HBAR price at any given point in time. So the green here is the expected HBAR price, the white is the actual price. And you see it does a pretty good job overall of giving a rough idea of where HBAR's price would be expected to be at any given point in time. So this model takes in three inputs. It takes in Bitcoin's price, Ethereum's price, and time as the three inputs to predict HBAR's price. And it does a pretty good job of that. And the benefit of having a relatively simple model in terms of those inputs is that we can easily ask it questions based on different scenarios. So what we can do is we can basically go ahead and say, given a certain date, given a certain Bitcoin price, and given a certain ETH price, what is the expected price of HBAR at that point? So we can imagine two different scenarios here. So let's imagine a bullish scenario and let's imagine a more bearish scenario in a full bull market. So let's imagine a more bullish scenario. So let's say it's early 2025, Bitcoin's price is at 200,000, ETH's price is at 20,000. Then the model predicts that HBAR's price would be at 60 cents, which is HBAR currently as I record this is trading at about six cents that would be around about a 10x move to the upside pretty good. But we can also see in a more bearish scenario, or if the market doesn't run as far as some people think it might in a bull market, then we can see a lower expected price for HBAR. But this alone is not all that satisfying because you say, well, why would you select these numbers? It could be any number of different numbers. It could be a bunch of different dates that could happen. There could be a bunch of different prices for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Why focus on just these two? And so the answer is we shouldn't focus on just these two. We should actually focus on a huge number of combinations and see what the average expected prices end up being or the median ex expected prices end up being. And that's really what this approach is, is a simulation based approach then built off of that machine learning model that I was just talking about. So what we basically do with this approach is we take a few realistic ranges for the three inputs of the model. So Bitcoin price, ETH price, and time. And for Bitcoin, what I did here is I chose a range that I think falls within where most people would think that Bitcoin could go in a next bull market. So either the more bearish kind of end here would just be it going back to its prior all-time high, and then all the way up to 345K is about five times higher than the prior all-time high. And then for Ethereum, it's 4.8K, it's prior all-time high, all the way up to 28.8K, about six times higher than that prior all-time high. And then finally time, and if history is any indication, we'd probably expect the next bull market to peak out somewhere in this general ballpark between mid 2024 and mid 2026. And so the idea then is that given these ranges of inputs, you just randomly sample from them. So you take a random Bitcoin number between these values, random ETH number between these values, and a random date between these dates here. And then you just ask the model, where would you expect HBAR to be given this Bitcoin price, this ETH price, and this date? And you just do that over and over and over again. You do it 10,000 times is what I did here. And what that gives you is a distribution of predicted HBAR price that with all these different combinations, where would HBAR's price be expected to be? And then you can look at things like what is the average expected price? What is the median expected price? And you can also look at maximums and minimums. So that's what I'm gonna show you here. So the average predicted price for HBAR is 61 cents. So again, about a 10X move to the upside from current prices, not bad. Median is also pretty close. And the reason why I like to show mean and median is that median is less affected by extreme outliers than mean. So mean is the average, median would be the middle value and tends to be less affected. But here it's very similar, suggesting there aren't a whole lot of extreme outliers really biasing the mean. 
We can also look at minimum and maximum. So the minimum expected price is just 10 cents. So not very much further above current prices, but that would be a pretty extreme bearish scenario. And then the maximum would be all the way up at a dollar and 46 cents. So quite nice, over twice as high as the mean price here. So we can also look at the actual distribution of predicted prices to look what they look like. And so this is what I'm showing you here. So the red line here is the median, yellow line here is the mean, and then we see the distribution. So of those 10,000 simulations that I did, where does the predicted price fall across the, the, the different prices? So this is you know 10 cents all the way up to $1.40 here and above. And so you can see this nice distribution here. And so what's interesting about this, and I'll talk more about this in a minute, is that the mean and the median are actually very close to what was HBAR's all-time high price from the last cycle. And so what this means is that roughly half, so the median here, roughly half of these are above that, roughly half are below. And so basically the idea would be that there'd be about a coin flip expectation of whether or not HBAR goes on and sets a notably higher all-time high relative to its previous one, or whether or not it actually maybe doesn't even make it up that high. Now, when you look at that, you might say, well, wait a minute, that sounds terrible. What are you talking about? That HBAR might not be expected to make a clear new all-time high in this next cycle. How does that make any sense? Usually crypto assets, especially ones that seem like they might have bullish things going for them, would easily clear their prior all-time highs. So let's talk about that because HBAR has something that's a little bit different about it than some other assets that might make this more of a reasonable expectation. And that is its circulating supply, or more specifically, the growth in its circulating supply. So you'll notice that back here at the beginning of 2020, its circulating supply was just under 2 billion. Look at where it is right now, over 33 billion circulating supply. We're talking about an over 10x increase in its circulating supply over that time. And so what that means is that there's just way more HBAR available to be sold now than was the case all the way back here. And we know that price is a function of supply and demand. And if we have massively more supply now than we did, for example, back here, we'll need a lot more demand to get price back up to that same point. And so that's where this expectation that in a bull run for moving up, maybe it's not unreasonable to think that even if HBAR got a massive amount of new demand, that price might still end up capping out at a similar level because of how much more supply there is. Now, it's important to note that even if it is the case that HBAR just goes back up to around its prior all-time high, that's not a bearish scenario by any case, by any means. I mean, look at this. That would be a 822% move to the upside just to get to the last all-time high. To get up to 60 cents, which was the average, that would be 874% move to the upside. Very impressive, given that we're trading only at around 6 cents right now. So it's not a bearish scenario. But I think it's something that might be a little surprising, given the fact that you might just think that, oh, well, prior all-time highs are meant to be broken in crypto. We have to just remember that with HBAR, the supply dynamic is very different. And that just makes it likely that's going to be harder for it to go in and set those extreme higher highs from where it is. But really what we're talking about here is more or less redoing what we did back here. That if you bought the lows in this bear market, that's roughly the same prices that it was back in 2020. And then you'd basically just be redoing this move. And I think most people, you know, especially when you were up here, you would have loved to be able to be buying down here and, and riding that move up. So again, I don't think this is a bearish scenario. It might just not be what one might have expected. Now, the thing that's also useful to think about here is not just price, but what would happen to HBAR's market cap if it went back up to its prior all-time high or to you know around 60 cents like we talked about before. So that's where I want to bring up this chart here. So this level here, 19.8 billion, this is roughly the market cap we'd expect Assuming circulating supply doesn't increase at all for HBAR, which is probably not going to be the case, but let's just imagine that it's kind of the lowest value. And we just multiply it by the all-time high price by 60. So again, market cap is calculated by circulating supply times the price. That would be a basically get you up to 19.8 billion. And what's notable about that is notice how that would actually correspond to an 173% move to the upside above the prior all-time high for market cap. And again, the reason why market cap and price are diverging here is because we have so much more supply for HBAR right now than we did in the past. So even if HBAR's price just got back up to its prior all-time high, 
you would actually be seeing the market cap get anywhere between 19.8 billion and 30 billion. So this would be if we got the full 50 billion market cap of HBAR, which is the maximum HBAR supply. That would be the maximum. So somewhere between 19.8 and 30 billion is where we expect the market cap to be. So what this would mean is that we'd actually expect HBAR to be massively valuable if that were to happen relative to the prior all-time high, which is only at about 6.9 billion even if price only got back up to its prior all-time high. So overall, this is not a bearish outlook, even if this is really the expectation, the prior all-time high. But it's just important to understand why this might be and why this might be a realistic expectation that this would be the case because supply has increased so much and that would actually correspond to the network being quite valuable, 30 billion, massively more valuable than it is right now from a market cap perspective, even if... It really is the case that's prior all-time high might be that expectation. All right, so if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like, and follow us on X. A lot of updates about our models and more over there. And if you want to check out our website, partydigital.io, link is in the description.